Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can update Docker Compose on a Synology NAS. So I have a tutorial that I recently released that explains a little more on why you might want to use Docker Compose. And if you're interested in watching that video, I'll leave a pop up for it now. But I'll highlight a few of those points a little later in the video, and I'll give a greater explanation on why you might want to use Docker Compose as opposed to Synology's GUI. So real quick, before we get started, I just wanted to mention that I have full written instructions with all the commands that we're gonna be running today in the description of the video. So the first thing we have to do is ensure that Docker is installed. So Docker Compose automatically installs on a Synology NAS, but you have to ensure that Docker is installed in order for everything to work properly. So go to the package center, and if you haven't already installed Docker, you can do that now. Next, you have to ensure that you can SSH into your Synology NAS. So if you aren't sure how to do that, I have a tutorial up for that and I'll leave a pop-up for that now. But basically everything we're doing today is done through the terminal. So for that reason, we have to make sure that we can SSH into our Synology NAS. So after you SSH in, you can run a command to see the version of Docker Compose that's currently installed. For me, that version is 1.24.0. Now that's a pretty old version, which means there's been a lot of bug fixes and a lot of enhancements. And for that reason, we're gonna upgrade this to the newest version. So to do that, we're gonna to navigate to where the Docker Compose folder exists. After you do that, you're gonna run a command that's basically taking the Docker Compose folder as it is, and it's renaming it to a backup, which means you'll always have it in case anything goes wrong. You can always roll back. So as of the recording of this video, the newest version that exists is 1.27.4. But that's not to say that when you go to update Docker Compose, a new version won't exist, even newer than this. So in the written instructions, I have a link that will point you directly to the version history. And basically, we're gonna run a command that's going to download the latest version. So where I have 1.27.4, you have to update that with the newest version that's released. So if 1.29.0 is out when you're watching this video, you want to run the exact command I ran. You just want to substitute that version with where I have 1.27.4 written. After that folder finishes downloading, you'll see that a new Docker Compose folder exists. So we have Docker Compose and we have Docker Compose Backup now. The Docker Compose Backup is all the configuration files for version 1.24.0 or if your version was newer, whenever you ran this, it might be something a little different than that. The Docker Compose version for me right now is 1.27.4. For you, if a new version exists, it might be different as well. But the important thing to note here is that it does not have the permissions that it needs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a command that's going to add the execute permission. So basically it takes all of the permissions that it has currently and it just adds the execute permission to it. So that plus X is not changing any of the permissions, it's just adding to it. You can now run the same command that we ran a little earlier to check the version that is installed, and you'll see that the 1.27.4 version that we just updated to is currently installed. So everything is now updated, we are on the current version. You should have all the bug fixes and all the new features that exist with the newest version of Docker Compose, and you're able to manage all of your Docker containers using Docker Compose if you'd like. So now that we went over how you can update Docker Compose, I'm gonna go over a few of the benefits on why you might wanna use Docker Compose on a Synology NAS. This might be redundant if you watched my last video on how to use Docker on a Synology NAS, uh, because I went over a lot of those points in that video, but just to reiterate them here, um, Docker Compose allows you to manage all of the containers uh, configuration inside of an individual file. So if you've used Synology's GUI, you know that you have to go through and you have to download the latest image, you have to double click it, and then you pretty much mount the specific volumes, you add all of the network information, you have to add your environment variables, you change your port settings, etc. All of that is done through the GUI. Now Docker Compose is different because all of the configuration that I just mentioned is inside of the individual Docker Compose file. So basically, you can take that file and you can port it over to an Ubuntu server or pretty much anywhere else that's running Docker and Docker Compose and you can bring that container up. So if you think of how you normally manage your Docker containers on a Synology NAS, you generally create a folder for each container underneath the Docker folder that's automatically created. So if we were to use PyHole, for example, you have two folders that you normally create, 
And then inside of those folders, all of your important information is then written to those folders. So basically you could take those folders and all of your personal data is inside of them. So with that in mind, if you're using Docker Compose, what you can do is create a Docker Compose file, have all of your configuration for that container inside of that file, and then create the container using that file. So basically, you're going through and you're setting everything up similar to how you're doing it using Synology's GUI, but you can technically export that folder, put it on a different operating system, and then everything is contained inside of that folder and you don't have to worry about recreating all your containers. So that is the overwhelming reason why a lot of people might want to use Docker Compose. Now there are some downsides. So everything is done through the command line interface. So if you're not comfortable using the command line interface, you might not want to actually use Docker Compose. There's nothing wrong with using Synology's GUI. It's just that certain people find it a little easier to use Docker Compose to manage all of their containers rather than Synology's GUI they basically feel like they're tying themselves to Synology's GUI since the container is configured through it. Um, now that doesn't mean that you actually are, it's just, you know, this is another option. So I'm not gonna go over it here, but you have to ensure that you're updating your containers somewhat regularly. So I don't wanna give the impression that every time a new container version is released, you have to update to it. Uh, but periodically you wanna ensure that your containers are up to date. Um, for that, I have a tutorial, a video tutorial. I'll link for that now. Also on my site, www.wondertech.net, I have uh, written instructions for pretty much all of my tutorials. So I have uh, how you can update a Docker Compose container on a Synology NAS there as well. So that wraps up the tutorial for today. Uh, if you guys made it this far, let me know what you think of this format. I've had a lot of requests to explain some of these tutorials in a little greater detail. Um, I try not to do that transparently, uh, mostly because I think that sometimes the duration is a deterrent. So if you get to a 20 minute video, I think it's a deterrent, you might not wanna sit there and watch it. So my goal is to be brief, give you the information that you need to have and kind of keep it at that. Um, and that's why I provide written instructions for most of these tutorials. But I'm trying to experiment by keeping the tutorial early on so you get in get the tutorial and then if you want to stay and learn a little bit more about how it works i'm going to try to do that at the end so if you think that's a good idea if you don't think it's a good idea leave a comment let me know what you think um, as always thanks so much for all the support if you guys have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments i'm doing my best to get back to you but there's a lot more questions now than there used to be so bear with me and i will get a response to you it just might take a few days so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. And thanks a lot for watching.